Hello, I'm Professor Barba, and I want to introduce you to Jupyter. Jupyter, a set of open source and free tools for interactive computing, for thinking with computing and learning with computing. Once you have installed Jupyter in your uh, machine, in your computer, and you have or you have a cloud Jupyter service, you will see what is being shown in my screen. This is the Jupyter dashboard, a file explorer. In this case, I have no files. So I will create a new Jupyter, no Jupyter notebook. The notebook is the basic format, document format of Jupyter. I will click on the button that says new here on the top right, and I will have perhaps some different options. You will have some different options, but uh, we will choose Python 3. And this launches a new tab in my browser with an empty Jupyter notebook. Uh, here where it says untitled, I may choose to give it a title. In this case, say I want to call it Jupyter Demo. My first demo for you today. Okay, that's my file name. And you see here an inviting cell with nothing in it. The cell is the chunk of content in a notebook and I can use different types of content. It could be code, computer code, or text that can be formatted using Markdown. So let's choose Markdown. Here I have an option, a pull-down menu, where I can choose to change this cell into Markdown. Markdown is a uh, way to format text for uh, a browser that has a few simple marks to indicate, for example, a heading. In this case, I could use one hash to indicate Jupyter uh, Demo as my title. I could use two hashes to indicate the heading that comes after that, say, uh, play with strings. That's our demo for today. And then regular text has, doesn't have any markings. I could say it's fun say, or maybe I want to use an indication for italics, which is the uh, underdash, really fun. Okay, that is a little bit of text that I have entered into a markdown cell, and to obtain the formatted text, I have to shift enter to execute that cell, and immediately I get a new cell that is by default code. So let's write some code in there. The first program that everybody writes is print hello world in Python, the print function is simply print. We use round brackets to um, mark what is going to be the parameters that we give that function. So the parameters in this case um, is a single string hello world. Uh, if I do shift enter, that executes the code cell and I get the output of Python's uh, print function, which is in this case, hello world. I could perhaps want to save the string hello world into a variable. Let's call it my string. My string equals, the equal sign is, is the assignment operator in Python, and I indicate a string with the double quotes, hello world, and here I have assigned a um, string to this variable. So now I could say up here print my string. Notice that I have gone back up to a cell and I can re-execute that cell and obtain, a, obtain its output. The output is the same in this case. Let me delete this cell to make more space. I have my, screen, my string and I want to perhaps add an exclamation point. So in uh, Python I can add strings together, concatenate is uh, the technical word, by just using the plus sign. So let's call that new string equals my string plus uh, quotes to indicate string and the exclamation point. And let's do enter to get a new piece of code in the same cell, print, new string, and I shift enter to execute and obtain the result which is hello world with now an exclamation point. The next fun thing that we can do with strings is to access different characters in that string with the square brackets. The square brackets with an um, index inside that marks the position of that character. Python uses indexing starting at zero, so the first um, element of new string would be new string square brackets zero. 
And if I shift enter to execute, I get the capital letter H, which is the first element of hello world. Uh, similarly, I could change that to be one and I will get the second element, the letter E. And here's a cool thing. You can use minus one to indicate the last element of the string. Shift enter that is the exclamation point. So that's a very cool thing that you can do with Python. Indexing into strings. Another cool thing that you can do is called slicing. Let me add here, so here I have an empty cell. I'm going to move it up using that arrow in the top menu and I'm going to change that cell into markdown to leave some notes to myself for the future. And I'm going to say here that this is my, um, I'm going to use one asterisk, two asterisk to uh, bold some text and I'm going to say slicing strings as a uh, little heading here and instead of using a single index now we're going to use two indices. So how do we do slicing? We uh, use the name, uh, name of the variable, uh, name of string, let's call it that, let's, uh, how about that, um, equals, uh, no, so with a square brackets, start, colon, end, that is the syntax for a slice. But one thing to notice here is that the last uh, or the end index is not inclusive. So these, uh, these are my notes to self for the future and I am going to use a slice here. So what, how could I get perhaps the first word of hello world? Hello, so hello, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Five would give me the first letter, I'm sorry, the first word, hello. Uh, maybe I want to get the last word, new string, that would be from zero. Oh, how about, uh, so six, how about we find what the last element is here? Oh, we know, already know how to do that, it's minus one. So what is that? World. And this is just an introduction to slicing and some cool things that you can do with strings on Jupyter. If you want to learn more about playing with strings on Jupyter Notebooks, we have a full lesson that is called Play with Data in Jupyter. You can find it on GitHub and it explains in detail uh, how to work with Jupyter, how to open a new one, how to in this case, even launch the Jupyter application, how to use different types of content in a markdown cell, and then uh, the different operations that you can do with strings right down here in the box. So this is a full lesson that you can read at your own pace and follow along in your Jupyter installation or in a cloud Jupyter service. That's our first demo. I hope you'll be back for more.